Welcome back. Today we're going to walk through the preparation of a bank reconciliation and then the journal entry to bring the cash balance per book in line with what it should be at the end of the period. So with that, let's get started. Okay, so here's what we got. White River Company's books show a cash balance at at the bank on December, September 30th, 2019 of $20,502. The bank statement covering the month of September shows an ending balance of $22,190. An examination of White River's accounting records and September bank statement identify the following reconciling items. So number one, a deposit of $3,680 that White River mailed on September 30th does not appear on the bank statement. Okay, so we're gonna work through all these. Then we're gonna do a bank reconciliation. I'm gonna do the bank reconciliation on this little page right here. So. We're going to start with, I'm going to do two column reconciliation, which is my preference. The book generally lays it over and under. I like them next to each other. Um, personal preference. Okay. So we're going to do, we're going to start with balance per bank. And that was 20,502. And then we have a balance per, oops. sorry, that's balance per book on this side. And that's balance per bank on this side, which was 21,190. Okay. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay. There's our two balances. So they don't agree. And then we, therefore we have to reconcile them. So let's reconcile these two balances, our balance per book and our balance per bank. We're going to start by just working through the issue, the problems that they give us. Now the fun part is of academic examples is they give you all the information that you need. You didn't have to go find it. Okay. So uh, that should actually be 22,190. So let's go ahead and change that real quick. And then we'll move on. Okay, so they don't reconcile, so we need to reconcile them. So here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna work through this. The academic example, the beauty is they already found all the all the stuff that needs to put in there, and then they just have to decide whether to put it in there and which side to put it on, which is important to know. But the hard part is actually finding all these issues um, on the bank on the bank statement, comparing it to all the individual records. It can be very time consuming. So, okay, we're gonna start here. So number one, a deposit of 3680 at White River mailed on September 30th does not appear on the bank statement. Okay, so a deposit that they mailed, that means it is a deposit that's been recorded by White River, but the bank hasn't gotten it yet, so the bank hasn't recorded it. Now, it is a deposit, it represents cash to the, to the bank or to the company. So the fact that the bank hasn't gotten it yet just means that we just need to make sure that uh, it's, um, that we're just gonna adjust the bank balance. Uh, in regards to that, our book balance is correct. We did receive that check. We just haven't, the bank just hasn't recorded it on its accounting records yet. So we're going to add the deposit in transit. And that was 4.3680. Okay, deposit in transit for 3680. So there's our first thing. The next thing we're going to do is checks written in September, but not charged to September bank state bar. I check for $150, I check for $4,820, and I check for $31. So these are just like deposits, but the other side, these are checks that the company has written. So they represent cash out. So that is cash that the company has already uh, essentially dispensed of, even though it has not left their account yet, it is not theirs. It is somebody else's cash. So we, they have, that is correct on our books, but the bank hasn't recorded it yet. So we just need to put it in as if the bank was recording it. So you're going, to stay outstanding checks. And that is equal to 150 plus 20 plus 31. $5,001 are the outstanding checks. So oop, that should be negative. That is money coming out of the bank. Okay. $5,100 as negative. Okay, the next thing. White River has not yet recorded the $600 of interest collected by the bank on September 20th on the Sequoia Company bonds held by the bank for White River. So the bank is holding on to bonds uh, and collecting cash and depositing it into the company's bank account. The company does not acknowledge that until they see it on the bank statement every month or they don't record it until they see it on the bank statement every month. So they see it on the bank statement, they're going to record that. So we're going to put an adjustment to the bank balance. So we're going to add back um, bond interest of $600. Okay, that's number three. 
Number four, bank service charges of $18 are not yet recorded on White River's books. So similarly, the bank's charging them 18 bucks. They didn't find out about that until they got the bank statement. So now they're going to record it. So we need to take out bank service charges of $18. Okay, there go the service charges. Now, the bank returned one of White River's customers' checks for $220 with a bank statement marked it NSF. The bank treated the bad check as a disbursement. NSF is not sufficient funds or non-sufficient funds. That means they received a check from one of their customers that was paying their account receivable. They received this check. They credited the customer's um, account receivable as, a, as having been paid. They deposited the check in the bank. When the bank went to get the cash that backs up the check, it wasn't there. That is why it's not sufficient funds. Their customer did not have sufficient funds to actually cover the check that they wrote. So the check gets returned and it is not a deposit. So they had put the money in and they recorded it as going in, but it actually, there was nothing backing up the check. So that is actually a reduction. So we are going to less an NSF check of $220. So $220 is not a deposit. They actually, they put it in as a deposit, they need to take it back out because there actually is no cash there. So, uh, and lastly, oh no, you know, number six, White River discovered that it incorrectly recorded check 7322 written in September for $131 in payment of an account payable as $311. So, there was an account payable of $131 that they paid $131, but they had accidentally recorded it at $311. Oops, transposition error. So that transposition error means they took too much money out of accounts payable because they recorded, they essentially recorded it as an overpayment, even though they didn't actually overpay it. So we're going to add back this uh, AP error. And that is going to be $180. One thing to note on transposition errors, if you have a transposition error, it is divisible by nine. Just a handy little note to yourself. So um, if there is error or something that you cannot figure out what it is, it, and it is divisible by nine, it is likely you had a transposition error. So where that comes in real handy is if you're doing your bank reconciliation and you can't figure out why you're off by $180. Think about the difficulty in finding this. This is not easy to find. So you're off by $180. Okay, well, $180 is divisible by nine. It is divisible 20 times by nine. So it is divisible by nine. So that means it is likely dealing with a transposition error. And because it is um, essentially divisible by nine in the hundred and tens place, that means you are off in your hundreds place. So that means you flipped your signs in the hundred place in uh, in your entry. So you know you're looking for a transposition error. That helps a lot. You're looking for a transposition error. And it also helps that you know you're looking for it in the hundreds place. That means essentially you are you're going to have when you do this reconciliation, you're going to have be off by $180. That means you recorded something. Um, either a, de a deposit was recorded for too little or a payment was recorded for too much and it's because of transposition. So you can go looking for the transposition. It helps to narrow it down. So if you can divide the error, if you can divide um, a difference by nine, it's possible that that is caused by transposition. Okay, that's number six. Number seven, a check for White River Capital in the amount of $175 that the bank incorrectly charged to White River Company. Remember, this is White River Company, not Capital. Two very similar names. Um, charge to White River Company accompanied the statement. Oops, the bank messed up here. They accidentally took a check that was um, written by White River Capital and took it out of White River Company's bank. Okay, so that's a bank error. We'll have to let the bank know about that problem. In the meantime, it needs to be a reconciling item. So we're going to add, this is going to be our bank error. Error, and that is going to give us back $175. Okay, not $160. $175. There we go. Okay. So the reconcile balance should reconcile here. We'll just add up our two things. 2144. 2144. We are good to go. So there is our reconcile balance. Uh, it works out very nicely. It reconciles, which is helpful. Okay, so there's our reconcile balance. Now, now that we have the balance reconciled. 
Balance per book, balance per bank. Our balance per book should be 2144. It is not 2144. Our balance per book is actually 2502. It needs to be 2144, so we need to make an adjusting entry to record all of these um, issues that we have or things we need to record. We need to record all of them in our financial statements or in our um, accounting records to make sure our bank cash balance ends up being 2144. So we're just going to work through these and record them all. So the first one is going to be bond interest. Well, that's pretty straightforward. We received bond interest. We have a credit to interest revenue for $100. Okay, there's the first one done. Uh, we have a bank service charges. So that's a debit. Debit bank service charge. And that was $18. Okay, bank service charges. Okay, there's our service charge. NSF check. Now, remember this NSF check. This NSF check, we received it on payment of an accounts receivable, and it was actually a bad check. So we had to basically take the money out of our bank account and put it back into the accounts receivable that we took it out of to begin with. So we are going to uh, debit accounts receivable. for $220. Now, we have an AP error. So in this case, we wrote a check for what is $131, but we recorded it as $311. Oops. So we took too much, we recorded too much out of accounts payable. We reduced accounts payable by 311, we should have only reduced it by 131. So we need to put the money back into accounts payable. And that was $180. Okay, now, the reconciled balance is greater than the balance per book, so we still need to put our cash balance in there. So our cash balance, our adjustment to cash is just going to be basically. Uh, dun, dun, dun. And balance. There we go. And there's the amount we need in our cash. So there's the adjustment to cash. Here's what that adjustment to cash consists of. And this should balance out. We have $780 there and $780 on the credits. There, there's our journal entry to get cash to the correct balance. And here's the reconciliation of how we got there. That wraps up the bank reconciliation and the related journal entry to correct cash or to report cash at the correct balance at the end of the period. Hopefully that was helpful. Have a great day and God bless.